Hi, my name is Sinan Kaduri. I'm a member on the Resect Core Committee. And in this video, I'll be demonstrating how to input data on REDCap for the Resect patient project. So hopefully you're familiar with REDCap through the registration of your surgeons for the project. As you know, you go to the website, redcap slms.ucl.ac.uk and you insert your username and password. When you log in you will have a list of my projects and you will see for the first time the Resect patient project. Because I'm in draft mode and this is for demonstration purposes only, this is the only project here but you should also see the Resect Surgeon Registration Project uh, where you entered details of the surgeons that perform TURBTs at your site. And these two link, would link together so that the surgeons are available to select in the patient project. Uh, just as one record for the surgeon project was equal to one surgeon. Uh, one record in the patient project is for one patient. And as you can see here, we have no records currently. So when you select the Resect patient project, you'll come to the project home page and you'll be interested in adding new patients. So you'll go to add records and add new record. This will take you to the data collection instrument page where you can see the list of instruments or forms that will be completed for each patient. And these include the basic demographics for the patient, how the bladder tumor is diagnosed, details of the operation and a re-TURBT if required, and the first follow-up. Just to remind ourselves of the overview of the Resect project, there are two phases, phase one and phase two. Phase one is where you insert uh, retrospective cases for TURBTs, and these will be TURBTs that were performed before your site registered. So before your lead collaborator received the Resect site registration summary email. You will need to have completed at least 25 retrospective cases before you will be invited to start phase two for the prospective cases. If you have more collaborators, you may need more retrospective cases. The date to uh, start including cases for the prospective patients will be given to you by the Resect team after you have completed the retrospective phase. Um, but we ask that cases done between the retrospective uh, start date and the prospective start date uh, should not be included. So, going back to REDCap, the way we, uh, the way REDCap will know whether your patients are retrospective or not will be based on the date that the resection was done. If this date is before your registration, then it will be counted as retrospective. If it is done after the date given for prospective phase, then it will count towards that. And I'll go through that when we go through the forms. So if we start by selecting patient details, uh, you will see that there is a study eligibility which reminds us of the criteria for this study. Here at the top you will also have the running total of how many retrospective cases and prospective cases uh, you have inserted. More importantly, just as with the surgeon registration project, we kept a key which was available to the collaborators at 
uh, this the same your site at your same site. Here we also have a record ID for this first entry. So similarly, we have to keep a key which will only be available to the collaborators at your site. Commonly, this is done on an Excel spreadsheet and saved to a local drive at the hospital. Your Excel form or your key should be the only uh, place where there is patient identifiable data. There should not be any patient identifiable data inputted in REDCap. So as a template here, I have three columns. Um, the REDCap ID is this record ID here. So I can copy and paste this into my key and I can link it to the patient hospital number. And this record should be available to all my collaborators. Um, just to be a bit more organized here, I've also put a column for which uh, study phase this patient is in. So this is a retrospective case that I'm inputting, so it will be uh, study phase one. I will then save that and when you, it's important to know that when you come to put a new record, just check that your other collaborators haven't already inserted that patient record into REDCap. So the questions that are uh, at the start are to check the patient's eligibility and as mentioned they go through whether the patients uh, whether the index procedure was primarily uh, for diagnostic purposes or tumor reduction purposes only so if they were then that would uh, make a stop sign appear to alert you that this patient should be excluded. So it needs to have been a TURBT for non-muscle invasive bladder cancer uh, that was complete um, and it wasn't a planned re-TURBT. There was no evidence of muscle invasive bladder cancer. It was not done as an emergency case and there was no concurrent upper tract urethelial cancer. Most importantly, you have the pathology from the index procedure and you know that it's urethelial uh, carcinoma. So for the retrospective cases, this should be fairly easy. However, for the prospective cases, you'll obviously need to wait a couple of weeks until the pathology from the resection is back. So your prospective cases um, will essentially be done retrospectively. Um, but what we would advise is that every week you look back at the cases that were performed uh, a couple of weeks ago to see if their pathology is back. As long as those cases were performed after your site registration so that they count for phase two. Um, so once you've selected the uh, correct answers for the eligibility criteria, then it tells you that your patient can be included. And here we need to know whether it was the first TURBT ever performed on this patient or whether it was for a recurrent tumor. Now please note that you need to have at least 80% of your patients in this category, so a first TURBT, um, and only up to 20% can be a recurrent tumour. So for this patient, for example, I'm inserting a first TURBT, I'll select their age, their sex, um, the BMI, which you can either insert their weight and height and red cap will automatically calculate that for you or you can insert their BMI directly. 
their smoking status, ASA and WHO performance status. And remember at the end of each form you need to click complete and go to the next form, save and go to the next form. So throughout these forms you will uh, have dates that you have to put in and as mentioned before when we come to the uh, operation form there will be a field that asks you to insert the date of the resection and this will be used by REDCap to figure out if your patient goes into the retrospective or prospective phase of the study. So the best way to do it is um, to work backwards from the date that your site was registered and pick up all the uh, TURBTs that were performed. So as an example, um, we will say that this patient was referred on the 23rd of November 2020. They had visible hematuria and the first positive investigation was a flexible cystoscopy. Uh, it was a diagnostic cystoscopy in a patient not previously diagnosed with uh, any bladder cancer and uh, they had a cystoscopy uh, shortly after their referral. Um, so we said November. Uh, you can actually just type it in, it might be easier. So if you put December 2020 and then find the date there. And um, they had a flexible cystoscopy and it was performed by a urology trainee. Uh, they did a bladder map and there was no biopsy taken and there was a strong suspicion suspicion of bladder tumour on the flexible cystoscopy. It was papillary. Uh, we found two tumours, five millimetres or less. Uh, the main one was in location seven and there was another one in location five. There, was no le there were no lesions inside the diverticulum. So we complete that, go to the next form. And again, you carry on um, doing the same thing. So if they had a CT as well, for example, uh, you could put when that CT was. Um, so shortly after, and it was done uh, after the diagnostic cystoscopy, but before the TRBT, it was a, U a CT urogram, and there was a probable tumor lesion seen, but no evidence of muscle invasion. invasion no hydronephrosis, no upper tract uh, cancer, and the chest was not imaged. Once you finish that, we then get on to the uh, operation details. So, once we're here, uh, you will see uh, down here the where the surgeon details link into this patient project. So you will have inserted your um, surgeon registration details in the other project and the list of surgeons that you've recorded should come up in a table here. So for demonstration purposes again I've only got one surgeon that's been registered and this is their surgeon ID. If I want to look up who that surgeon is, I would look at my key, my other key, which says, uh, you know, in full detail who that surgeon was. If you remember, there was an option as well to jog your memory and put in their initials, uh, but this might not appear if you did not select it. So um, here we did put the surgeon's initials which were MK and <clears throat> you will have a drop down list of all the surgeons uh, of, that you've registered to select who, who performed the operation. 
So obviously here we only have one option, but for example, if your operating surgeon was a trainee, but the responsible surgeon was an attending or a consultant, then you could pick two different, uh, two different selections here. And again, you carry on uh, with the same form, going through the uh, surgical technique and the cystoscopy findings, etc. The rest should all be fairly self-explanatory. Uh, as another reminder, if you want to have a look at your uh, overall data entry, you can go to Record Status Dashboard and this will give you the list of all the records that you've inserted and uh, the status of each form, whether it's complete, incomplete or unverified. This gives a nice overall picture. Um, it also allows you to quickly go into different records. Uh, another way to do that is uh, to search for a record directly. So if you have uh, your list of red cap IDs here and you just want to go to one record you can insert that number and you will see that it comes up in the search and you can go to that record. So I hope you found this useful. Um, if you have any um, questions at all for us or if anything is unclear then please email us on resect at bursurology.com. Thank you again for listening.